Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. My name's Colin, call sign MM0 OPX and I do apologise for the uh, the noise in the background, the ticking noise, but that's the heater that Santa Claus uh, brought me. But it is quite chilly in here. Um, it's currently 4.3 degrees. Uh, when I came out here um, about 8 o'clock it was uh, 1 point something so it's warmed up a little bit. But it's still kind of chilly. So in this video we're going to be uh, hopefully showing you how to uh, calculate the correct coax lengths um, and how to cut them and how to check them on the analyzer uh, for creating phase vertical antennas but I suppose for four squares or any sort of antenna where you need to measure um, a specific length of coax hopefully this, this calculation will work for you so my end game is to is to cut, uh, is to measure, calculate, measure and cut uh, feed lines and a delay line for 20 metres uh, specifically on 14.175 so without further ado let's go and have a look at the uh, at the sums okay so we're going to do a little bit of uh, maths here um, so it doesn't matter what um, uh, uh, length of coax what delay it is it doesn't matter the theory is all the same um, so before I do it for um, the uh, eighth wave phasing that I um, that I've been using, so that that entails a 39 degree uh, delay line and a 157 uh, degree feed line. We're going to do it for the more common um, quarter wave phasing, um, which is um, uh, feed line 71 degree and sorry, the de the delay line uh, should be 71 degrees and the feed line should be 84 degrees. So the frequency that we're going to work with is. 14.175 megahertz. So that, 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 that's our frequency. So what do we want to do first? So we want to take 300, which is the speed of light. So this is the, the rate that um, uh, radio waves travel at. And you'll be aware of this figure if you've been making antennas, certainly in, in metric form. So if we take 300 and we divide it by 14.175 I'm not going to go to too many decimal places so that's 21.164 divided by 14.175 equals 21.164 so that's our wavelength okay and then we want to take that 21.164 and then we want to divide that by 360 because there's 360 degrees in a circle um, in a cycle and that gives us 21.164 divided by 360 equals 0 0.05 so that's point zero point zero five eight. Seven, nine. We'll call that. So for every degree, this is the wavelength. Okay. So then, what we want to do is, so for the delay line, so the delay line is seventy-one degrees. Keep that in mind there. So we want to take this, and we want to multiply it with that. So seventy-one degrees multiplied by zero point zero five eight seven nine equals. Uh, 71 times 0 0.05879 equals 4.174.174 4, and that's meters so our delay line is this length 4.174 meters but we need to take into account um, the velocity factor don't we so for RG213 that would be 0.66 so we take that 14.174 and we multiply it by 0.66 equals oh that's not right 4.174 multiply 0.66 equals 2.7 call that 2.75 it's close enough equals 2.75 meters 
Okay, so that is now our 71 degree um, delay line. Now, one I made earlier. So there is a website to do this. If you want to do quarter wave phasing, you don't need to do any of the maths. You can just go into this website, uh, Victor Alpha 7 Sugar Tango. Um, I'll put a link into the description. So, you see the calculation that we've just done? So, we ended up with 2.75 meters. Look what they've ended up with. So, we're near as uh, cock on. So that, that's, that, that shows the math. So it doesn't matter um, what kind of delay uh, you're wanting or you know it's, it's, as I said the mass is all the same so let's put that to the side now again frequency 14.175 megahertz um, and this is for the eighth wave phase in eighth wave yeah kind of do the V symbol <laughs> lambda symbol wave wave I can't remember what it is, spacing. And then what we want is a 39 degree um, delay line. And then we want two 157 degree feed lines. Okay. And we're remembering that 300 is the speed that radio waves travel up. Okay, so we're going to do the same again. So we're going to take um, 300 and we're going to divide that by 114.175. Do you remember what that was? We'll do it again. 300 divided by 114.175 equals 21.164. Equals 21.164. Okay, we then need to take that 21.164 and divide it by 360. Divided by 360 equals. So we take, oh, we've done that, so that is, whoops, I need to do that again. I'll just hit the, the clear on my calculator. So 21.164, I'll write that, I'll write the workings down. 21. 0.164 divided by 360 equals 0 0.05879. Now we're going to trim this on the analyzer so it doesn't need to be absolutely spot on. Excuse me. Okay. So when I take that figure, point zero five eight seven nine, and we're going to multiply that um, by one hundred and fifty seven. So zero point zero five eight seven nine multiplied by one hundred and fifty seven equals. So that's nine point two three. meters okay but then we need to take into account of our velocity factor so we'll write that up here so the VF of RG213 RG213 is 0 0.66 so 66 percent so we take 9.23 and we multiply it by 0.66 equals so 9.23 Multiply by 0 0.66 equals 6.09 meters. Now, if everything was absolutely ideal and the coax was spot on, that would be the length of our 157 degree uh, feed line. Okay, so we need to make two of those, so we'll put there times two. Okay, so now we want to. We want to make the delay line, so again we've already got this figure here. So we know what the um, we know what the length is per degree for the frequency. So if we do 0 0.05879 times 39, 
Oh, so times point zero five eight seven nine equals two point two nine two point two nine two. Remember that's meters. Okay, but then we need to take into account our velocity factor. So two point two nine two and we multiply by 0 0.66 equals 0.292 multiplied by 0.66 equals 1.51 uh, meters so and we need one of those times one so we need one of those and we need two of those okay so if we just if we didn't have an analyzer we could cut these to those dimensions and it would probably be it might be okay but I'd like to be a little bit more accurate than that so we want to do a check okay so on this calculator um, it, it does another little calculation so the um, you want to check your uh, you want to check your um, coax at ninety degrees of a frequency. So if you look at this um, for, for so for this example, so the eighty four degree feed lines are ninety degrees long at fifteen point one eight eight. Um, so then you would set your analyzer to this frequency and you'd look for the minimum Z impedance. So we want to work this out. Um, it won't be the same as this. Um, because we're working it for different uh, feed and delay line but um, so we're going to get a figure so the check frequency is what we're looking for I'm just going to get a little crib sheet here so I can do the workings as I did earlier okay so for the 157 degree so when you're doing this you don't want to take into account the velocity factor you want to take in the um, the actual okay so we know that um, if we take 360 and we divide that by 90 that is 4 okay probably don't need a calculator for that but so we know that this length is 90 degrees at some frequency so what we do is what we'll do is so 9.23 0.23 and we'll multiply that by 4 which will give us our 360 the degrees so 9.23 multiplied by 4 equals 36.92 36.92 and this is actually okay um so this is the this is the um this is actually the wavelength in meters that we've worked out. Okay, so that's the wavelength in meters. So then what we want to do is we want to go look at our 300 figure again because you can actually take 300 and divide it by the frequency or you could divide it by the wavelength and it will give you the uh, the other. Okay, so if we take 300 and then we divide, so 300 divided by 36 point nine two equals there we go divided by thirty six point nine two and that then equals eight point one two six megahertz so this is for our check frequency so we're going to need to know that later okay and then we're going to do the same again for um, the delay line okay so remember this figure here Oh, sorry, this is. Uh, I'm looking for my delay line here. Okay, so it's this one here. Okay, so that's the feed. So be the delay. That was the delay. That was the feeds. Okay, so the delay was this. So two point two nine two times 4 sorry 4 times 2.292 equals 
9.168 ok and then we want to do, so that's in metres and then we want to do our 300 again so 300 divided by 9.168 equals and, oops small buttons in this calculator my big sausage fingers divided by 9.168 equals 32.722 megahertz so this is our check frequencies and these are the ones that we're going to set on the um, analyzer okay so that's our calculation, so I hope you've managed to, to actually follow that. I hope that's um, uh, that's been okay for you. But as I say, if you're going to do it for quarter wave phasing, and you're going to be using um, uh, 84 degree feed lines in it, and a 71 degree um, uh, delay line, phasing line, whatever you want to call it, you can do this online, and as I said, I'll put this, uh, I'll put this link in, in the description. Okay, so now the next thing we do is we need to actually make our, um, we need to cut our coax. So let's go and do that. Okay, so what I've actually done here is I've actually, um, this was actually originally a feed line I had cut, um, but I actually cut it too short uh, last night. Um, so what, I'm, what I've done is I've cut it, I've cut it even shorter and I've used it, I'm going to use it for the delay line. So it should be, um, 1.51 meters, but I've, I've probably added about another 8 inch or so on. Always, always uh, cut it a good bit longer. Now we're going to trim this, um, we're going to trim this coax. So this is the frequency that I've set it to. So this is 32.711 uh, megahertz. Um, I read that I actually did the calculations a little while ago and I went to a few extra decimal places, so hence why it's slight, just ever so slightly different from what you've previously seen on the calculations. So this here, this Z impedance, this is what we're wanting to, to get to the lowest point. Now it won't get to zero. And now, um, last night when I cut the feed lines, the lowest it went was 2.6. So basically when I got the first one I did, I, I kept on cutting and what happens is it got to 2.6, I took another little bit of coax off and then it started to go back up the way. So I'd actually cut too much off. So you won't see a negative figure, you'll just see it get to a minimum and then it'll slowly start to rise up again. And then all you want to do is just take the minimum off this. So you can see just now that this is flickering at kind of 10.3, 10.4, 10.6. Okay. So what I'm going to do is constantly measure. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to chop a bit off. I'm going to see what it does. This is just open. This is just open, obviously. And right away, you can see what a difference that's made. So that's brought that down 8.7. Okay, so this is going to be quite sharp. So let's take another little bit off. Now we're down to 7.5. 6.7. You can see I'm just kind of taking, I know I could take kind of more off. Um, but I'm just going to take a little because I know it should be it should be down to two point something. Okay, five point seven. It's still coming down. Just going to take a little bit less off this time. Five point two. So it's still coming down. So really, I'm looking for this. I'm hoping and I'm thinking this is going to be two point seven. This is what I'm looking for. That's what it's going to come down to. Okay, 4.6 and this minimum Z impedance is going to be different for whatever type of coax you're using so it's maybe it's, it's why it's a good idea to actually do it on a test piece take another little piece off again okay we're down to 3.6 okay now we're getting close so now I'm just going to take little bits off at a time oh so that took a lot off there you can see how much I took off there very little. So that's down to 2.9. So I know from experience I want to take that to 2.7. If you were unsure, as I say, you would just keep trimming bits, trimming bits, trimming bits, and then if you see it 
starting to rise again, then you've taken too much off. So if you know what, what your kind of characteristic is of your coax, um, it's a lot better. So let's take a tiny little bit off here. So that's actually a bit lower than what I expected, that's down at 2.4. So, I don't actually want to take any uh, too much more off. Well, actually, we take a tiny, tiny little bit off and we'll just see what it does. 2.2, so that's coming down further. So that's okay, so that's a bit of a shock for me. I didn't expect that to come down as far as that. So let's take a tiny little bit more off. 2.1, so it's still coming down. That's what... 1 1.8. Flickering on 1.6, so it could still come down yet a bit. 1.5. See, this is where it's getting. This is where it's getting nippy. Let's see if I could just take another. I'm just taking, literally trying to take like two millimeters off a time. 1.5. See, it's still flicking at 1.4. It's going to go a little bit lower yet. I didn't expect this, if I'm honest. So, there we go, we're at, we're at minimum, we're not going to take any more off. So, we've bottomed out because, see this 1.4 on the Z impedance? This is actually flickering 1.5. So it's 1.4, but it's flickering on 1.5, so we don't want to take any more off. So that is minimum, minimum Z impedance, okay? So that's our, that's our coax at the correct length. So for the 39 degree line, degree um, phase line or delay line for 14.175. Okay, so all we're going to do now is we're going to put the uh, coax connector on this and then jobs are good in. I've already done the feed lines, um, so so they're all done and what we'll do is I'll label them up um, and that'll be us. So so yeah, that was a little bit short for me. I've only done um, four or five of these lines. I did a few, the original ones I did for 40 meters were from um, RG8, um, Mini 8. Um, Coax and it had a different characteristic, but obviously with this coax just physically being a shorter length, the Z impedance was actually coming down a bit lower. Um, as I say, I didn't expect that at all, but but that's okay. That's experience for me too. So we know that that is the right length. Um, so what I'll do is I'll actually just measure this quickly. I'll take this out. So if we look at our calculations under here, so 1.51 meters, that's what our calculations told us. So I'm just going to measure this with tape. Again, it's not going to be super accurate, it should be good enough. So that is nearly 1.62. 1.62 so that's telling me that this coax isn't exactly spot on to the velocity factor so that's actually good to know you mean there's so many different types of coax out there I actually got this coax from a um, from a sale uh, long time ago and that's why I'm using it up so I've no idea what it is I mean it looks okay Take a look at that if you can see the right in there. There's nothing really to identify it. But it just goes to show you that um, the velocity factor isn't always um, isn't always spot on. So I hope that was helpful. Um, if you're going to be uh, calculating coax lengths, um, cutting them, uh, checking them on the analyzer, um, I appreciate it wasn't the greatest video. Um, I don't have a great deal of spare time to be, to be making these videos, so try and squeeze them in as and uh, when I can. Um, so this set of uh, coax lines that I've cut, this is actually my second set. So I've already got a set for 40 meters made of the uh, 
super mini 8 coax and this coax was a 213 because that was just what I had there lying around there and that'll be fine there won't be too many losses uh, but I'm also going to make some for for 80 meters as well um, so if you're going to do as I, as I said earlier on if you're going to do these uh, these coax lines for quarter wave you, you could use the online calculator and uh, it's been very uh, kindly provided and again I'll put a link to that in, in the description but I couldn't do that, I had to do the maths for myself and I hopefully it, uh, it made sense, it's not my strong point. Uh, so, I mean really, the tricky bit is actually cutting the coax to the correct length on the, the analyzer. As I said last night, I, I cut my first uh, feed line and I actually cut it too short. So I cut it to the, the correct length, taking the velocity factor into account and added on about another 6 inch. And then I started cutting, and before I knew it, I was it was too short. So the, the velocity factor wasn't 66%; it was probably more like 70%, some something something of that magnitude. Um, and as and I and on the delay line that you've seen me cutting, it should have been 1.51 meters, but it was actually just over 1.6. So 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 if if you don't have an analyzer and your velocity factor is not spot on with your coax which I don't think it will be all the time, I think it, there, there will be variation, you know. Um, so it's always better to check on an al analyzer and, and, and you can, you know, my analyzer is quite old, I, I picked it up reasonably cheap on eBay uh, some years ago and it's been a great tool, but uh, you know, Nano v v and a and the likes of, is going about and you know, you could do the same thing uh, with that. Uh, but what I would say is, if, if, you're, if you're going to do this for the first time, buy one extra length of coax, so maybe buy an an extra length of coax, the shorter length, whatever one of the shorter lengths are, is going to be, in my case, the delay line. Um, so if you waste that, it, it's not the end of the world and you've still got coax left over. Um, as, you know, so, uh, you know, I, I had to do that. I had to, I had to cut down a feed line and then that transformed into the uh, delay line. Okay, I'm going to stop waffling here. I hope that was okay. Um, as I say, hope, hopefully somebody's picked up something from that. Uh, if you like my stuff, uh, please hit the like button. If you don't like it, hit the, di the, the dislike button. That's the thumbs down. That's perfectly fine. Um, please, uh, you know, leave some comments uh, down below. And if you like the stuff, please uh, hit the subscribe button. It would be very much appreciated. So, not quite sure what I'm going to do in my next video. Uh, I may get the uh, face vertical set up in the garden uh, for 20 meters. Uh, I've still got the video review to do of the fiberglass poles, but I'm still thinking about how I'm going to do that. It's, I keep thinking about that because it could be quite a, it could be an in-depth video. I've also got another video in my head regarding the drive-on mast clamp that I have, um, so which I made during the the first lockdown here in the UK. Okay, that's it. Bye for now. We'll see you in the next video.